UFC on Fox press conference has just ended. I'm joined by UFC President Dana White here in Sacramento, California. Dana, before we get into this card, uh, you announced the strawweight division for women, also competing on the Ultimate Fighter. Why now? Uh, because it was time. I mean, the, 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 the division is stacked. There's tons of talent. And uh, obviously the 135-pound division went very well. So now is the time. And this is the 20th season of The Ultimate Fighter. It will be all women. Did you want to do something different for this particular season, being a monumental year? Well, I don't know how, how different you can do things for The Ultimate Fighter. I mean, it is what it is. The women's season went very well. And having an entire season with women, not only that, but crowning a champion, it's never been done. We took all the best, and there's going to be more. There's more coming in. All the best 115 pounders, and uh, they will live and train and fight, uh, you know, in the house, and then we will crown a champion at the end of the season. So the entire season is very unique. All right, and I know I'll get killed if I don't ask this, so no idea on coaches yet, correct? Right. We still haven't done the Weidman Silva fight has to happen, and then we get into the new year and fight. You know, the landscape changes so much with people either being injured or losing or whatever happens. So as we get closer, we'll pick the coaches. This card on Fox is headlined by Demetrius Johnson and Joseph Benavides. Um, I know you touched on it a little bit during the press conference, but can you just kind of talk about what the fl flyweights bring to the UFC roster? Yeah, first of all, they're, they're exciting. Their, their fights are nonstop action. I mean, Demetrius Johnson is without a doubt the fastest guy in the UFC and possibly even in the sport. They're fun, they're exciting to watch. I remember a day when people told me that we could never headline a show with 155 pounders. And then here comes BJ Penn who basically built that division and uh, became one of the biggest superstars and legends of the sport. So, you know, every time there's change, people get a little goofy and these guys deserve to be here, they belong here, and we think so much of them, they're headlining a Fox card for us. And somebody else who's helped build the smaller divisions is Uriah Faber. He's facing Michael McDonald. Um, you know, Michael's touched on that Uriah is a bit older than him. He's been a long, around for a long time. What are your thoughts on, on that matchup, being kind of the old school versus the new school? Yeah, that's a great fight. I don't think people even realize what a great fight that really is. Uriah Faber um, has been around for a long time, and uh, he just keeps getting better and better. It's not like Uriah Faber, uh, you know, is 34 year old, a 34 year old who looks like he's slowing down. He looks unbelievable. Michael McDonald is a beast. The kid uh, is super talented. He's very well rounded, and that fight's going to be an absolute war. And the fight after that is Chad Mendes versus Nick Lentz, and we saw a little bit of aggression between the two of them, which is uncharacteristic for for both of them. Uh, what did you think, and does that help you get hyped for a fight more? Yeah, I, I think that from what I got out of this thing here today. I think they're both tired of not getting the props they feel they deserve. And, uh, you know, Chad Mendez has been on a tear. He looks unbelievable. And Nick Lentz stepped up to take this opportunity. He had another fight. He was offered this fight and took it. And I respect that. And not only do I respect the fact that he took the fight against a guy that a lot of people don't want to fight, but um, he wants to go out and prove to the world that, that, that he can, he, you know, he should be here. And if he does, if he beats Mendez, he's definitely going to prove it. I love that stuff. I love what both of them said. I love the attitude. Um, and, and I love the fact that they're both tired of being ignored. Yeah, and that fight was bumped up because Carlos Condit and Matt Brown fell off the card. What was your reaction? Because so many people were looking forward to that. It was almost guaranteed to be a war. Yeah. Such a good fight. Um, you know, they, these things happen. It's unfortunate, and especially if you're in Carlos Condit's shoes. You know, he, he's healthy and ready to go and, and, and can't fight on this card. Um, and Matt Brown, I, I call Matt Brown Mr. Fox. I mean, every time he fights on Fox, he, he destroys people. So um, it sucks. All right, let's change topics. Let's go to UFC 168. Um, I'm hearing that there's going to be some special things planned for that fight week. Uh, it's obviously a huge rematch between Silva and Weidman. Is there anything that fans can look forward to 168 fight week? I don't care what we do. I don't care if we drop gold bars from the ceiling, if we hand out $100 bills at the door. I don't give a what we do that night. Nothing. As a fight fan myself, and I cannot express this enough, I've been talking about this for months, when the lights drop and those two walk into that uh, arena through the tunnels, it's going to be insane. I mean, I can't explain it enough how I feel about this fight. And it's very rare. Obviously, Ronda Rousey, Misha Tate, and the rest of the card, I can't think about anything else. It's like the Mark Hunt, Antonio Silva fight. I mean, when Bigfoot and Mark Hunt fought that night, I'm not kidding you, for the next four days, every morning when I open my eyes, 
the first thing I thought of was Silva and Hunt. That's how sick that fight was and how much I loved it. We've had an incredible year of amazing fights with big talent, and to end it with Weidman Silva, I cannot wait for this fight. I'm not thinking about anything else. Yes, we're going to do a bunch of cool shit if you show up. We're going to do fun things, and the event will be all, all I care about is that fight. I can't wait to see it. I can't wait till the lights drop. I can't, you know, like the other night, Joe Rogan called me at like 1230. We do this sometimes. We're, we're freaks like this. But he calls me at 1230 at night, and we talk till 2 in the morning about that, that fight. This is one of those fights that's so big, it spills over into the people who are casual fans and into people who don't watch the UFC. That's how big this fight is. All right. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us, Dana. We will see you tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs>